This video is sponsored by TrueFire. We all know the minor pentatonic scale. It's possibly the most popular guitar scale there is. It's one of the first we learn. It's easy to play. It sounds great and it's really flexible. It feels like you could possibly play it in just about any situation. But it's Stablemate, the major pentatonic scale, which doesn't get as much love or press, I think, is sometimes the much better choice to use. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Chris. Today you will learn about the major pentatonic scale. Now, maybe you already know the major pentatonic scale. You certainly know the minor pentatonic scale. And you may or may not already know that these two scales actually share the exact same architecture. And when we zoom in, I'll explain all that. The reason I'm on about the major pentatonic scale is because I was reviewing a lesson by Andy Timmons over on TrueFire. If you haven't heard of Andy Timmons, you should check him out. He's a very lyrical, beautifully melodic guitar player. He's one of my favorites. Anyway, in this lesson, he was using the major pentatonic scale and it sounded beautiful. I was captivated and inspired. So I jumped right off and I wrote this backing track, the one I used at the top, and I just did a deep dive into the major pentatonic scale. Turns out, I think, the major pentatonic scale is quite possibly one of the most beautiful scales that there is. One of the great things about online guitar lessons, I feel is also the curse. And that is there's so much stuff out there. How do you go about finding something very, very specific at a reasonable quality level? It's not easy, as you probably already know. I feel like TrueFire has solved this problem by thoughtfully curating over 50,000 video lessons from hundreds of the world's greatest guitar instructors. I use TrueFire myself and it is an amazing platform. You can follow lessons through genre tracks. You can follow lessons from specific educators. You can find lessons that are dialed in exactly for your skill level and your current capability. Use the code CURIOUS30 to save 30% on any TrueFire course, or consider the All Access Annual Pass there, which is on sale right now. If you sign up for the first year, you get a second year for free. Okay, let's dive in and talk about the major pentatonic scale. Okay, what makes the major pentatonic scale so special? We all know the minor pentatonic scale, and you may or may not already know that the minor and major pentatonic scale share the exact same architecture. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna play an F sharp minor pentatonic scale. We all know the minor pentatonic scale. I'm starting on F sharp for a reason that'll become clear here in a moment, but here it is. Right? That should be recognized by all of us as the minor pentatonic scale, starting and ending on F sharp. The way this scale's relationship holds together is that this same set of notes in this position, if I start and end on A, but play the exact same notes, this is now the A major pentatonic scale. Mm -hmm. 
shares the exact same notes. This is called the major minor relative relationship. So any scale you know, any minor pentatonic scale you know, if you start and end that same scale, like from this root position, from the second note, you're actually playing the relative major. It's the same exact notes. That's the relative major minor sort of relationship. All that is to say that if you know the minor pentatonic scale, you already know the major pentatonic scale. Now you may have already figured this out. You may have seen this before. You may already know this. That's cool. We're going to get dive a little bit deeper. Every single scale you hear has a musical personality. That personality is generated by the notes in the scale and how they relate back to the, where the scale started. So let me show you uh, the A major scale. Now this is a seven note scale. This isn't a pentatonic scale. And I'm going to number these, these notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root. In other words, we start on the root. Root, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root. This is the gold standard of all scales. In fact, in all music theory, if you ever see any numbers, they relate back to this structure. The major pentatonic scale, the formula for that one is this. Root, two, three, five, six. And then we're already back to the root. It's a five note scale, pentatonic. Root, two, three, five, six. Then we're back to the root. Now, as you can see, this is a major scale missing a four and a seven. That's not really super important, but here's when we dive into how these scales sound and why they sound the way they do. The first relationship we want to understand is what kind of third is in the scale, because the third defines whether the scale is major or minor. This is a major third, right? It comes from the major scale, and that defines that this scale, even though it only has five notes, since it has a major third in it, it goes with a major chord. It's not going to fit over a minor chord at all. It's got to fit over a major chord because it has that major third in it. The next set of relationships we want to understand is how the root interacts with the two notes that are next to it. Now, if you can see here, the root and the two are only a whole step apart. I'm going to move these notes over to the middle of the next for us. So there's root, two, three, five, six, root, two. Here's our two. It's a B note in this, in this scale. Listen to how the two and the root interact. I'm going to be playing the two and then scooting back to the root. Now, if you listen to this and you just sort of like say to yourself, what kind of sound is this? You can describe it any way you want. I would describe this as a pretty soft resolution. It's not very tense, right? Let's go over here and check out the six to the root. Here's the six. It's pretty soft as well. Here's the two. show you why this is so important. I'm going to quickly just change this scale into the minor pentatonic scale, A minor pentatonic. Now you can see the formula has changed, right? Now look at the notes that are next to the root. It's the flat three here and it's the flat seven over here. So check this out. Here's the flat seven to the root. It's this relationship here. And here's the minor third back to the root. Now you can hear these relationships are totally different from the ones we just listened to in major. They're more aggressive. So let me demo back and forth. Here's the minor pentatonic scale. Flat three to the root. Flat seven to the root. Now, if I try to do that same thing, right, play in, with that aggressive style, listen to how the major pentatonic scale just sort of doesn't do it. It's, it's too nice. It begs me to play it soft. Right, I can't really get too aggressive with this. 
I mean, it holds up, but it's a different relationship than this one. The minor pentatonic has that really aggressive bluesy sound. You can really, you know, sort of get really aggressive with it. Whereas that major pentatonic really wants to be played soft. Those relationships are what make it such a pretty sounding scale. Okay, so that's sort of the mechanism of the scale, how it works, why it sounds the way it does. Let me give you a couple of practical examples to get used to the scale and give you a couple of phrases to start um, using to sort of bring that major pentatonic scale into your playing. Here's one from the root. I'm just gonna go up from the root all the way up to this A chord here. And I'm just gonna play the scale straight through. There's a couple of slides in here, but check this out. That's a nice little phrase. That gives you a nice big chunk of neck to sort of express this scale. I'm gonna do the same thing going down this time. So there's an ascending riff and it's sort of a descending riff using that major pentatonic scale and you know covering a nice big chunk of the neck. Now I want to show you something else which is we're going to go back to that F sharp minor pentatonic scale because we already know it is the same notes as the major pentatonic scale starting and ending on A. But I'm going to take it way up here, right, this is still F sharp an octave and I want to show you a blues lick. I ripped this off from a Jimi Hendrix album um, and uh, and it's a blues lick in the key, in a minor key but I'm going to repurpose it and end it on that major note that A note. Check this out. Now over minor it works but repurposing it for major suggests that my entire blues library of the minor pentatonic scale is going to work as major pentatonic riffs, if I just change the context and make sure I, I sort of goose or make you know very, very clear that I'm ending on that new note. So any phrase you have that's in minor pentatonic, if you simply just rephrase it so that you end on that relative major, and that's always a minor third away from where you start, right? Three frets. Um, you can repurpose your entire blues library with this nicer sort of like more pleasing sounding scale. So you've got these really two powerful sounding scales, that minor pentatonic scale that's very, very aggressive and the major pentatonic scale that's very, very pretty. Using the same information, you can now get twice the mileage. Well, there it is. Hopefully this deep dive into the major pentatonic scale sort of unlocked why it sounds the way it does. And we saw the difference between that major and minor pentatonic scale and how even though they're made up of the same architecture, using those different sort of resolution paths of tension and resolve to the root makes the scale sound totally different. Tabs for this lesson, as always, are on Patreon. That's always linked in the description below. Head on over there if you want to grab the tabs and take a look at what else I offer on Patreon and see if you'd like to support the channel. As always, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it helpful. Stay curious, and I'll see you next time.